I'm a small female. When this happened, I was about 24, and it was absolutely terrifying to be in this situation. When I went to the mall, usually I never had any issues. Maybe at some point, it might have been a possibility, but I don't really expect this type of thing to happen. If you can't tell, I'm more of an optimist. So that day at the mall, when I walked into the food court side, I was heading towards the FYE at the back of the mall where the entrance down there was closed. I had something specific in mind that I was looking for. At the back of the mall, they have a huge metal garage door type thing, and there's usually nobody back there. They haven't filled the space in a long time. There was a really gross looking guy there that struck me as a druggie, but I ignored him and went into the store that he was near. He had been sitting on the benches near the storefront, staring at his phone. The guy looked like his face had seen better days. He had bumps and lumps all over it. So I went into the FYE, and the guy followed me in shortly after. FYE didn't have the movie that I wanted, so I kind of started browsing around, looking for something else here to leave with. I'm kind of like that. When I don't get what I want, I'll just buy something else small. I noticed Mr. Lumpy was staring at me, but he also had his phone camera pointed at me from behind another aisle. At first, I thought he was just being a weirdo, but then I actually noticed what he was doing. He was taking pictures of me. I went up and told the store employees about him and left the store. I'm sure he didn't do anything about it. The guy seemed a little apathetic. So I thought I'd lost the guy, and I went to a corner coffee shop to get something to drink. While I was waiting on my drink, the bumpy guy came up and stood on the other side of the wall, peeking around every now and then. There was a few people here, so I called out to him. What the fuck are you doing, dude? He stopped peeking around the corner and walked away from the shop. I got my drink and headed towards the food court where there was a GameStop. This GameStop was in the era where they had plushies and stuff like that. I liked looking at the plushies and switch cases. I have like five of them with different designs. The guy found me in GameStop a few minutes later. I stayed in there uncomfortable that he was walking around me like a vulture. I left without buying anything because he was seriously creeping me the hell out. I decided to go hide in the bathroom for a few minutes to see if he would move along. This stupid ass followed me into the bathroom. There was nobody else in there but him and I, so I guess I made a whoopsie. I'd cornered myself in the bathroom with a strange guy who had lumps all over his face. He finally got enough courage to come up to me without saying a single word and push me up against the bathroom wall. I was kind of more freaking out that I was pushed up against the germy wall than I was him doing what he was doing. But I was terrified that he was going to stab me or something, seeing that vacant look in his eyes. As if saved by ex machina, a woman with her small girls walked in and saw the guy. Lumpy turned right around and fled as if he knew what he was doing was wrong. I'm not really sure if that was the case. I'm not defending him being crazy and doing whatever he was planning, but I don't think the guy was all there. So I walked out with the woman and her shortlings, but as soon as I got out of the bathroom and heading towards the exit, the guy started following me from behind another wall. Security came up behind him and stopped him. I ran off, but I could hear the guy say that he was with me. I yelled back that I wasn't, and I left the mall. I went back a few times to the mall, and I never saw him again. I haven't been back since the pandemic, but then again, I haven't been to any place since it started. I work in an office filing papers and doing data entry. The other female co-workers in this office 
seem to be really oblivious when it comes to this one guy who still works at the place and just kind of sneaks around being a creep. Otherwise, they just like it. Well, his creeping became stalking when he targeted me for some reason. It was 2018 when he noticed me. I'm the quiet girl in the corner, and nobody really ever talked to me about anything other than work-related stuff. I had my friends outside work, and I had my coworkers separate. I like it like that. So this guy was doing his usual creeper stuff, among the other ladies, and they were eating it up. So I guess they did like it. After lunch that day, he came up to my desk to, I, I guess, see that if he could get a rise out of me. But I played it boring. I did the whole, is there anything else? To make it awkward, but he said no. But he hung around the area for a little bit. I went back to ignoring my surroundings and working. The problem didn't get bad until I went to go home. I got in my car in the parking garage, and he popped up next to my window. That startled the shit out of me, and I rolled it down a little bit to see what he wanted. He didn't seem to want anything, but just to scare me and ask me what I was doing. I told him I was going home and going to sleep. He said I was being boring, which is what I was going for, and I turned on my car and backed out. The next day at work, he'd follow me around the office and try to get close enough where I wouldn't notice, but I knew he was there. I eventually called him out for following me around, and he broke the silence. He tried to play it off like he was just coming into the room randomly, but I'd seen him duck behind walls and try to hide. I asked him in the most disconnected tone I could why he was following me around. He told me that he wasn't, and just kept denying it. I didn't want any part of what he was about, so I went back to my desk and kept working. I thought about buying liquid ass to spray around the cubicle, but I'd probably get in trouble for that, whether it being spraying something like that, or having gas that bad. I'm a very tactical person. So anyway, he kept popping over the top of the cubicle to get peaks. I let him do it for the rest of the day, but it was actually kind of making me uncomfortable. He again followed me through the parking lot that afternoon, walking to my car. The moron actually tried to follow me home. I took him around several random streets until he finally got tired of following me and turned off somewhere. I went home after that. I wasn't going to lead him home and I always keep a full gas tank so I have a better chance of outgassing someone. That sounded bad, sorry. When I went to work the next morning, however, he continued to follow me around the office and even got caught a few times. I got tired of this and went to HR. I told them I wanted this to stop. They said that they would need proof that he was following me around, and as annoying as that was, I told them that I would film him doing it. They told me that that would be enough, and we agreed that that's what I would do. The entire day, I caught him a few times that he was following me and presented to the HR. The woman in HR told me that she would take care of it, and I said I'd hold her to it. After that, he didn't seem interested in me anymore. The HR department talked to him and told him that if he didn't stop, they would do legal things to him. He avoids me like the plague now. I had a really good relationship with my girlfriend, who's now my ex. A little while back, I lived in her parents' house as they had a decently large place, and we were both paying them rent. I worked at Walmart and she worked at McDonald's, so it wasn't a whole lot of money, but we did get by. The first part of the relationship was fine, but as time went on, she started getting weird about things. I don't even know how long we were dating for, but things like that don't really matter to me if I'm happy with someone. I told her one day that I had to go to a family gathering, and they told me not to bring anyone. I honored their wishes, but my girlfriend hated the fact that she couldn't go. 
She begged me not to, but I wanted to see my cousin that I never got to see but once every decade or so. We were around each other a lot as kids, and then they moved away, so that ended. They live a long ways away. So I went, and pictures were taken and all that. My aunt put the pictures that she took of my cousin and I on Facebook and tagged me in them. When I got back, my girlfriend got really weird. She saw the photos of me on Facebook with my cousin and immediately got jealous. She actually had the audacity to ask me if I was screwing her. I told her that would absolutely never happen. She was family that I went to go see, not get with. That's just gross that she'd even suggest that. My cousin was my sister's daughter and we were kids together. That's like the best friends that you could have growing up in my opinion. So my girlfriend kept bringing up the fact that I left her down here in this state to go to another to see another girl. The whole idea that she was upset about that was ridiculous. Months later, my girlfriend started going to work with me for some reason. She'd sit outside all night in my car and complain to people that we knew when they'd show up and make shit up off the top of her head. I knew because they'd try their best to get away from her and then come inside and tell me the shit she was talking. One of my friends told me that she was trying to show them baby pictures of her family all the time. Take it from me, nobody wants to see those. A long time passed by and she kept coming to work with me. I told her multiple times that she could stay home if she wanted to sit there and complain all night that she's tired and cold, but she let it slip one day that she was making sure that I wasn't cheating on her. I found out later that she had been spying on me through Facebook, and I found a GPS tracker on my cell phone that she installed. She denied having anything to do with it, but I know. It was actually kind of creepy that she'd do that. I started to distance myself from her, and I even let her know why. She was invading my privacy and breaking my trust with her. She tried multiple times to probe my family about things that happened at those family get-togethers, and they all told her the same thing. I finally got tired of her doing this to me, and I left. I went up north to be with my family, and I left her at her parents' house. She stalked me on Facebook for a good while before I called her out on it and told her to stop, but she persisted. She denied trying to get information on what I was doing, but my family wouldn't lie about that. She had contacted a lot of them, and I saw the messages. I just went around and had everyone she knew about block her on Facebook. She tried to make new profiles to contact them, but by then, Everyone knew not to talk to her anymore. She'd gone crazy and I wasn't having it anymore. At least now I get to see my cousin a lot more, and I decided I was going to take a break from dating anyone for a while and just be with family. I went to the mall on a whim one day with a friend, and we were just walking around looking at stuff that we could not buy and all that typical mall trip. I wasn't going to walk out of that mall without something at least small though. I had a couple of bucks on me and I was probably going to get a game or a CD. What I ended up with was a stalker. We went to this game shop in the mall, one of those little hole in the wall places that don't see many people. There was a girl in there looking at the Wii games and I commented on a game that she had picked up saying it was a pretty decent one. Her eyes lit up as I spoke to her, like she had never been spoken to before. Honestly, I wish I would have known why nobody talks to her. She was really into talking about games that she had, what few of them were actually on her mind. I told her my friend is waiting in another store, so I'd better go. She followed me into the other store to talk some more, but I didn't mind. She was a nice girl, and I was actually beginning to enjoy her company on this mall trip. My friend commented that I had picked up a groupie, but she either didn't hear him or something, or at least didn't mind being called a groupie. The three of us walked the mall for a little while longer, and I told her if she wanted to hang out or something, 
she could have my Facebook. That was an extremely bad idea, since she wouldn't leave me alone after that. I got home that afternoon, and she messaged me on Facebook, and I had a small conversation with her. The next day, I came home from work, and she's showed up at my house. That was a bit jarring, seeing as she never called or messaged me to do so. She just showed up. I told her next time she needs to ask. She didn't at all seem phased by that. I played a few games with her and eventually she went home. I had to work all week and I wouldn't be able to do this again until the very next week. That didn't stop her from showing back up every single day that week. I had to turn her down so she'd go home. She looked highly disappointed, but I couldn't help it. I needed to work in the morning and she could not be there. She stopped showing up for about a month. All of a sudden after that though, I started getting weird things in my mailbox like fingernail clippings and pieces of hair. It was really gross. But I ignored it. I asked her over Facebook later on if she had done that and she asked me if I liked them. Ugh. I told her it was gross and not to do it again. She kind of didn't like that. So what she started doing was age-old pranks. She would come by my house on occasions and throw eggs and toilet paper everywhere. I thought this was getting out of hand, and she needed to stop. So I told her on Facebook that she either had to quit, or I was going to have to ban her from coming over altogether. She got more and more relentless with the pranks, coming off as she thought they were actually friendly and cute. They were not. I had to clean that shit up before the landlord saw it. She broke the final straw when she threw a bucket of paint on the front of my house. I called the cops on her since I knew where she lived, and I haven't seen or heard from her since. She must have had the shit scared out of her having the cops show up at her house. She seems like the type. If she wasn't childish and crazy, maybe I would have even liked her. She probably didn't realize it, but she became a stalker, and she had to suffer the consequences. That was years ago, so I hope she grew up a bit by now and stopped doing that to random people. Wherever she is, I hope she's not stalking anymore. This story takes place on a little dirt path in the woods, in the middle of Arkansas. I used to love trailblazing with friends, although that's changed in recent years. I usually do it by myself now that everyone has either moved to different states or just doesn't have the time anymore. Regardless of who is with me, there's always something that feels great about being isolated in the woods or on small trails that nobody travels on. I usually wait until nighttime to go on these trails to get that feeling of isolation. The dark woods will put you mostly at ease if you allow it. So I waited until nighttime and drove my half broken down sedan to a high wade side parking spot, which I'm pretty sure was unsafe. But if the car wasn't there when I got back, at least it would be somebody else's problem then. When I got out of the car, the highway was completely dead and void of any other soul. Wandering around that night would be really exciting. I grabbed my flashlight and found a little opening between the trees that led to a small trail created by nature. I was expecting only to see a few deer and maybe a raccoon or two, but that's not at all what I found. In fact, now that I think about it, I didn't see any wildlife out there, although I'm sure they were there. The woods were silent. I heard no cars, no air moving through the trees, and no wildlife in the least. These were very thick woods, and I wouldn't have been surprised to come up on a river running through. This was absolutely the middle of nowhere. So as I crunched through the uncharted territory, exploring with my super bright flashlight, I did in fact hear something. I wasn't sure what it was, but it sounded like a moan. 
The moan sounded like it was in the distance, but I could barely hear it. I figured that the forest was playing tricks in my ears, and I was hearing air move through the woods. As I continued to move through the woods, slowly stepping over bushes and brush, tying markers to trees so I didn't get too lost, and generally enjoying the dark quietness of the woods, I hear a moaning sound off in the distance behind me again. Fear rose up in me as I hear it. That was not at all what I wanted to hear in a place like this, but it was unnatural for the woods. I knew something other than air was making that sound, and now I wanted to leave. All my instincts were screaming for me to get out of the woods. I decided to start following markers back, and that's when I ran into trouble. The markers I had placed on certain trees were gone. I heard the sounds of footsteps closing in on me, and they weren't an animal's steps. These were human. I wasn't alone like I'd hoped to be. It possibly could have been a hunter, but they wouldn't be out here because it's illegal to hunt out here. I'd rather it be Bigfoot than another person. But that thing actually existing would have been asking too much. The best I could, I tried to navigate the direction of the highway, but since the road was void of any other cars at the moment, I really couldn't tell if I was heading the right way. When I found another marker is when I started seeing someone behind me move around. I could hear footsteps as if they were right next to me, but when I looked back, I could see someone tall in the shadows walking slowly towards me. I started to walk a little faster, not really being able to go that fast out here due to the overwhelming amount of brush. The person behind me was gaining as I made my way in some direction. I was eventually going to come out of the woods on some side of it. The markers were all gone by now, and I was off my path. The person stalking me was still behind me somewhere, because I could still hear them but barely. At least I'd gotten farther away. I wandered around a little bit until I tripped over asphalt. I'd found my way back to the road, but my car was nowhere to be seen. My cell signal was also completely gone due to the heavy tree line, so there's no way I was going to be able to GPS my way back. I had to walk it. I walked down the highway for what seemed like hours in the dark, with my flashlight slowly dying more and more. I had enough juice to go into the woods, and then turn around and go back, not follow an insanely long highway on foot. As my flashlight was nearing the end of its batteries, I came up on a section of highway that intersected another road. My cell signal popped back in, and I used my GPS to find out where I had gone. Apparently, I'd come out of the woods right by the car, but I had traveled in the opposite direction. I found a gas station not far from where I was, and found someone to give me a ride back to my car. The guy was cool for giving me a ride back after I told him the story. Once back in my car to ride home, I started reflecting on what I'd stepped into. I'd never gone in those woods before, so I wasn't sure if anyone was out there. But one thing bothers me about my encounter out there. The person following me could obviously see my light, but had no intention of calling out to me or finding out who I was. All they did was follow me around while remaining in the shadows. I don't understand why they wouldn't just let me know if they were friendly or not, and that unsettles me the most. Aside from my reason of night trailing, what reason could they have to be in the woods on the side of the highway with no other vehicle in sight? They could have walked out there, but that's a very long way. I know there could have been a house out there, but usually people living in the woods like that don't walk around at night without a flashlight for themselves. So this guy was just out there in the woods where it's completely pitch black wandering around? I can't believe that. I refuse to believe that. This was just such an unbelievable encounter that I'm doubting I saw anyone at all. Once I got home, I told my roommate about it. They said I was probably being followed by some druggie that was geeking in the woods or something. 
But still, even without a flashlight? Even someone that's strung out would have a flashlight or something. Let me just point out that if you went out there without a flashlight, it'd be like shutting your eyes tightly. It was that dark out there. There was no moon. The canopy of trees is extremely thick. And unless you have bat vision, there's no way to see. I can't accept that there was somebody out there feeling their way through the dark forest like that. I did end up going back out there trailblazing again. But I found no one. It was actually peaceful, but I was still unsettled because of the anticipation that I might run into the forest stalker again, and this time would have been my last. I didn't run into him though, and I ended up coming out with my markers at the right place and making it home without anything creepy happening. The second experience makes me even more unsure that I really saw someone out there with me. If you're a trailblazer like me, and you like to go into the woods at strange times. Don't forget to bring some protection for yourself if you do happen to encounter someone else in the woods. I don't have advice for ghosts though. I guess just run if you see one of those. But always bring markers and an offline GPS map. I went to Walmart one morning to get some food for dinner that night, and I ran into the most strange man there. Before that, I'm a guy and I was living with my girlfriend at the time. She couldn't really do things for herself. She was really sick and I was taking care of her. I did the cooking and cleaning so she didn't have to. She could barely move after a while, and in the end I miss her very much. She's very much a part of this story, so don't worry. I'm not farming for sympathy. When I was at Walmart, this guy started to follow me around. He was dressed kind of strange, because all he had on were brightly colored shorts and nothing else. The guy couldn't have been bothered to put something over his nipples, which were gross. Only in Florida, am I right? As I walked around the store... This guy had a fascination with me for some reason, and he would stand there and stare at me. It might have been that I had a few pieces of very expensive jewelry on, or high-priced clothing, and he thought I was rich or something. Maybe that wasn't it, but the following events makes me think he might have thought I was rich. I was living alright, but I wasn't middle class or anything. All my expensive stuff was from gifts from family and friends. Walking around Walmart, I certainly noticed the guy, but he didn't try to make it super obvious that he had issues or anything. I paid for my stuff, walked out, and got back into my car. I didn't see him walk out with me, or I probably wouldn't have left and gone straight home. That's what I did though. Once on the road, I had a car follow me all the way to my house, but I didn't think it was that guy. I thought it just might have been one of my neighbors. Before you tell me how imperceptive I am, the guy in the store was just some weirdo that wasn't causing any problems. I didn't think he had the intention of following me, and there's a lot of people packed into this tiny little town. It could have been anyone following me home. When I got home, I started dinner since it would take all day to cook. When someone goes down the street in front of the house, you can really hear it. It sounds like it's in the living room. I really didn't notice since it happens all the time and I was concentrating on other things, but my girlfriend sure noticed. There seemed to be a lot of traffic up and down the road today, way more than usual. She peeked out of the window a few times and saw the same car pass by a bunch of times. She informed me about it and I kept watch. Once I saw the car, I instantly recognized it as the one that followed me home. I got suspicious, but then it stopped running up and down the road. That night, I heard a car pull up in our driveway and shut off. My girlfriend wanted me to go check it out, and I got up out of bed to go see who it was. When I looked out of the window, the guy I saw from the store was already out of his car and walking around the yard. My girlfriend saw this as well and started freaking out. 
I didn't want to tell her that this was the guy who followed me around Walmart, since if she got stressed out anymore, she'd probably start having problems and she might need to go to the hospital. I called the police and told them that there was a guy in our yard, and he was wandering around. The guy came up to the doors a few times and jiggled the handles, so I know he was there to break in. They came and shined their lights all over the place and eventually found him. I walked outside when they had him in the front yard talking to him. He said he was looking for his dog, and I told the police that he must have lost his dog at Walmart because he followed me all the way here. I also told them the dog wouldn't be in my back door, which he was trying to get into. I had the guy trespass from the property, and thankfully he didn't come back. I have signs all over the property that say no trespassing. I thought that if he came back, I would just have him arrested. But since he didn't come back, everything was fine. Thankfully, he didn't get into the house, because I would have ended him if he did. I would have hated for my girlfriend to have to go through something like that. We didn't feel safe after that, so we got some cameras to help. Not too long after that, I had to move because I couldn't stand being in that house anymore. I'm now living around 2,000 miles away from there, alone. But I guess the upside is that now I feel safe. If you like this video, consider subscribing. If you are subscribed, hit the bell icon to make sure you never miss an upload. I just have one question for you. Who is that behind, Who is that you? behind you?